Hello, welcome to Spectre House Research. Yeah, my name is Gary, and uh, we're going to get into an episode tonight about ghosts, uh, hauntings, and orbs, and all the related uh, phenomena that goes uh, goes with this subject. But uh, it's going to be it's going to be on a much more personal level uh, for me. It was my particular initiation into this ethereal, strange, eerie world that uh, does exist out there. I've got the proof, and I've gathered it for years. Audio, video, and personal stories, experiences. And I'm going to tell you all about it here on this episode, so stand by. This is Spectre House Research, and welcome, guys. And ghost. What is a ghost? Well, nobody really knows or understands how how they do what they do, but they are here. They exist in many forms, and I'm here tonight to personally tell you, provide you proof, my proof, that I've collected that uh, this world does exist, maybe in another dimension, maybe in multiple dimensions, coexisting, coalescing with this this world, this three-dimensional world that we, uh, we're living in, which is how does this happen? Well, I'm going to give you my best theories, my best guesses, and they are guesses because nobody at this point in time can say, all right, this is the real deal, period. They're all educated guesses, and I really, I believe in that, and I offer my my evidence to you and do with it what you may and it is good evidence okay let's get started uh, we're gonna take uh, take a little time trip back to 1967, 66, 67 era, and we got the Beatles playing on the radio, and we got hula hoops, and slip and slide, and all these fun things, as a kid, uh, made, uh, made for a very memorable time. Well, my family, my family years... My formative uh, growing years were filled with a lot of joy, love, and uh, a lot of memories. Had a great family, and we had dogs, cats, turtles, birds, just about anything that uh, had a tail and four legs. Well, we, uh, <laughs> we acquired it and had it, and they were my friends, and still to this day are. Okay, everybody. Let's uh, let's get into what uh, what I want to present to you tonight. My personal experiences that started at uh, the uh, tender age of six or seven years of age, uh, dealing with the paranormal. At uh, that was a time frame that uh, I became aware that something quite different was going on around me. And as memory serves me, it uh, didn't present itself dramatically. It, it was a slow, ongoing process, but uh, nonetheless, a process that I did, I did take note of, and uh, do remember clearly to this day what uh, what was happening in and around me at that time. What, uh, what were some of the catalysts that uh, might have caused this phenomena to occur? I do not know, but uh, we, can, 
we can make some educated guesses, uh, and we'll delve into those here momentarily. But uh, let's focus right now at this moment on childhood and childhood development uh, for me. Uh, my experiences started uh, again at the age of six to seven years of age, and that point. I knew that uh, I had some experiences that most kids were not going through and and or experiencing, but uh, I uh, I did uh, I did keep these experiences to myself. I I did not tell anybody and or my parents. Uh, they were not aware of what uh, what was happening, and I kept these experiences to myself uh, pretty much my whole life till. Approximately eight years ago when I started this long trek into the paranormal and investigating the paranormal world. But uh, the experiences did stay with me all these years and I still to this day very clearly remember what uh, what was occurring back, back in the mid-60s when I was... Uh, six to seven years old. As a child, I, I was born in Texas, born and raised in uh, San Antonio. I was a single child. I, I, I was the only child that uh, mom and dad had. And uh, so I, I received a lot of love and a lot of attention. And I enjoyed, uh, I did enjoy that uh, type of uh, upbringing, and it awarded me a lot of uh, a lot of special moments. We had family scattered uh, through Texas and North Carolina area, and my mom and dad were particularly fond of uh, our grandmother that was uh, living in South Texas on the border. And as a child, we would uh, go and visit uh, frequently trips every six months approximately to go see see how she's doing, make sure she was doing good. And we all loved her and uh, loved the experiences of going down and uh, visiting Grandma. That was, uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. So we would make these trips down to South Texas to visit uh, visit our family and visit our grandmother down there. And it was at this point, approximately maybe two years into uh, into all this, that I, as a child, noticed things were starting to slowly happen to me, and my eyes and ears were opened up to a new world that. Uh, at that point, it was very scary, but again, I kept uh, kept a lot of the experiences to myself. Yes, these uh, these experiences were were scary. Uh, luckily, at the time for me as a child, they were infrequent and. Once, once I went through them and experienced them, I usually would forget about them until the next visit uh, down to see family, and the whole process would start all over again. But uh, let, uh, let's get into the microscopic uh, exam of what, uh, what I was experiencing, uh, so now you can also experience what uh, what I was going through. Let's do this. My grandmother's house was very typical of the 60s style home. Uh, no garage was a two bedroom home. Had lush, lush vegetation for being 
in such an arid uh, environment in South Texas. She had a lot of orange trees, lemon trees, pecan trees, and just uh, it was just a green forest from what, uh, from what my recollection recalls. And my grandmother's neighbor, quite a curious fellow, he had, uh, he had caged monkeys as pets. He, as I recall, had at least four animals that, uh, that he kept outside. And you could hear them screaming day and night. And this provided for kind of very eerie, uh, eerie feeling come nightfall. <laughs> the sounds uh, were quite, uh, quite unique and unnerving. So these monkeys living next to my grandmother's house uh, didn't make for too much of a good neighbor policy for my mother. She pretty much forbade me to, to go over to the neighbors to look at uh, the curiosity, to look at the, uh, look at the zoo, shall we say. But uh, anyway, I, I did go over a few times uh, without her knowing. And I just didn't like the feel of the house or those monkeys. Something about, something about that place just didn't feel right to me as a kid. And I pretty much stayed away. And uh, yeah, I was well afraid of uh, the creatures and the creatures of the night, so I guess you could, you could say. And the house was also located next to some railroad tracks and these trains were running day and night and it was really a very noisy environment uh, growing up with the monkeys and the trains and if, uh, if we had parties, which usually were the case when we got together, uh, you know, every six months. Yeah, there was a lot of noise around, but uh, what I was experiencing wasn't uh, related to noise or voices. It was a physical aspect of something that I didn't understand. And now looking back, it was physical contact from the paranormal world that, uh, that was occurring. I would uh, lay down to go to sleep uh, for bedtime and I would uh, feel presence around me uh, even before going to sleep and I was usually awoken by a feeling of my ears being played with by unseen hands uh, and this was quite unnerving and very scary as I was sleeping usually when we went, uh, went on these trips for the visits. I would be on the sofa in the living room by a window and uh, I was experiencing all this uh, by myself. And most of the time I just endured and uh, you know lived with, uh, lived with it and didn't, uh, didn't tell me about it. Yes, this was uh, quite an unnerving experience, having your ear tapped by unseen hands, fingers playing with the ears. You can feel the fingers inside the ear. I, that was such a disturbing feeling. I do remember that. And it also occurred when I was wide awake, laying there, getting ready to go to sleep. It also happened. So I experienced both sides of the coin. Uh, being awoken by unseen hands uh, and also falling asleep, wide awake, uh, going into the sleep mode, They're just laying there and I'm experiencing these hands pushing, prodding on my ears. Yeah, it was a, it was a quite a, quite a wake up call.
So we have these experiences occurring to me uh, as a child, uh, uh, not on a nightly basis when we were visiting, but uh, pretty frequently that I would remember the events. And like I said, to this day, they, uh, they still make an impact, but uh, uh, I'd be uh, heading off to sleep and comfortable and uh, just waiting and sometimes it happened sometimes it didn't but I at times when it occurred would feel either one ear being manipulated by unseen hands and or both ears being manipulated uh, sometimes I would have my ear in a pillow on my side and the ear on the pillow would be being manipulated by unseen hands through the pillow. That was, uh, that was rather weird and uh, scary to me. And the other ear open to the air would also be manipulated by unseen forces phantoms of the night, uh, friends, ghosts, eh, specters, whatever you'd like to call them. But uh, that, was, that was quite an event when both ears were, were messed with and I didn't like it and scared me so much that uh, I kept, kept these occurrences to myself uh, up until this YouTube special uh, that I decided to go ahead and do and tell my tell my personal story and this particular section involves my youth and my childhood uh, so anyway guys well there's a little bit of what uh, what happened there and let's uh, let's move on I guess you could say I was lucky. The uh, home in San Antonio where, uh, where I spent most of my time, uh, I didn't experience any paranormal activity, no voices, no shadows, no physical touching of any type, just a uh, normal, regular childhood uh, with, filled with good memories. Uh, it was uh, the other home that my grandmother had that uh, I experienced strange and unusual things. So yeah, you can imagine being being there in the moment, trying to fall asleep and expecting knowing something probably is coming your way, uh, waiting, wondering, and uh, the next thing you know, you hear a loud monkey scream, squeal from the distance and also the lonely whistle of a passing train. And then you feel these icy cold tentacles, hands touching your ear. <laughs> kind of gives you the idea, right? Well, as a child, I experienced that infrequently, but uh, as, uh, as they say, as a child, I was a haunting survivor. And I had a story to tell, and I kept it to myself. Well, so the process it, that continued for three or four more years, I, uh, I was experiencing pretty much the same phenomena of the years. Something like my ears, and uh, luckily uh, that was all that, uh, that occurred. And... It abruptly ended uh, with the uh, with the passing of my uh, my dear grandmother, and uh, once uh, once she was gone, uh, our family trips ended uh, with the uh, with the sale of the home and uh, the turning of a new page, but uh, a chapter that was uh, was well remembered in many respects. So, moving on uh, with the passing of my grandmother and the no further contact with the house, 
Uh, my life seemed to settle down. I didn't have any more paranormal experiences uh, that I was going through. Uh, just normal, everyday things uh, that a kid goes through school and, you know, homework and chores. But uh, didn't have any further contact with, uh, with what I guess you would call uh, the uh, supernatural world out there. And the uh, life was good. I enjoyed, I enjoyed everything. And life, uh, life went on. I didn't have any other occurrences uh, paranormally as a kid uh, growing up. Had a good, uh, good remainder of my childhood uh, without any incident. Uh, I did have one dream that even now that I, I look back and uh, just I, I'm amazed by it because it was so clear. Uh, it probably was what you would call a lucid uh, dream. Uh, and it occurred about three years after all the haunting and uh, that event in my life. It was about three years after that that I had this dream that, uh, that happened to me that I still remember. And what the meaning of it was, not sure, but uh, here, uh, here is a dream as I will describe it to you. My dream. I see myself at approximately eight, nine, ten years of age, and I'm in the backyard of our house that I was growing up in. I had my pet German Shepherd by my side. We were sitting in the grass by a fence, the backyard fence. I'm petting, petting the animal. Gypsy was her name. Lovely dog, loved her and uh, I had her for a lot of years. But uh, we're in the back of our house. I am seeing myself from a third eye. I am looking down at myself and I'm looking into this scene. I'm petting the dog and as time passes, I start to ascend. My third eye starts to ascend up and I am still viewing myself petting my dog in the backyard by the fence. And I am ascending higher and higher and higher and higher till the point that uh, I am basically in space. Kind of a weird dream. I don't understand that. I thought possibly, well, did it mean I was going to die or something was going to happen to me? Well, you know, we never did as a child, so if anybody has any clues or any ideas, uh, you can uh, get, get hold of us uh, through, uh, through YouTube and uh, give us a comment. But uh, anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Just, a, uh, just another little uh, tidbit, uh, possibly a good, uh, good lucid dream that I remember now. And uh, well, you know, just it's filed away. So we will end uh, this chapter of the book here with uh, the story of my uh, haunting as a youth and all the ramifications that came with it, uh, what I learned from it and what I've taken from it to this day. And part two is going to further uh, go down this paranormal road and we'll get a little, uh, little closer to our destination of finding out, uh, delving, uh, proving that uh, we, uh, we are all in some way haunting survivors. Cleo is watching.